A ball is dropped from a lookout 180 meters high. Okay. So, there's our lookout. And there he is, he's got a ball in his hand and he drops it, okay? So that's the first part. At the same time, a stone is fired vertically upwards from the valley floor. When did we say it was a valley? It's a valley now. Okay, great. I suppose I should make this more valley-like. There you go, it's a valley now. There's uh, some, some projectile weapon on the ground. And it fires a stone upwards. Uh, with speed, V meters per second, capital V. There you go. Wait, hold on, hold on. It's fired upwards, isn't it? There you go. Can you tell I failed the year 8 visual arts? Alright! Take G equals 10 meters per second squared. So we've got at the same time. At the same time, we have a force acting downwards on this situation. Okay. Now, this is kind of what I love about um, situations like this. It's such a simple setup. It's such a simple setup. It's not like I have to give you 50 million equations. All of the information is sort of in there. It's all there. Okay. Now, what do they ask us? Find for what values of V a collision in the air will occur. All right, pause. What's that mean? Find for what values of V a collision will occur. What's going on? What are they thinking of? Well, thankfully I still have this with me. Oh, I should have brought a rock from outside. Anyway, so ball falls down, right? Okay, this will just have to do as a rock, okay? Um, ball falls down, it gets dropped, okay? And at the same time, the rock gets fired upward, okay? Now obviously, if the rock doesn't get fired upward, stone, the stone doesn't get fired upward at enough of a velocity, right? For example, if I just throw it up, like, you know, just do that. Hardly any velocity, right? Um, it's not, it's going to hit back on the ground. It's not going to go high enough to hit the ball. The ball's going to come down, right? And this is going to go up and then go down. And there's going to be no collision, right? And they're just going to land on the floor, okay? If I hit it, if I fire it fast enough, right? You know, then they'll actually hit, before this starts coming back down to the ground, they'll hit somewhere in the middle, somewhere in here, okay? So, for what values of V will a collision occur? I'm trying to work out what's the lowest this could be that they'll actually collide, okay? There's the first question. Then find in terms of V, the time and the height when a collision occurs. Prove that the collision speed is V meters a second. Okay, right. Now, um, let's just say, what is the first question? Um, we're looking for a... Um, for what values, it's an inequality we're after, right? It's not a V equals this value, okay? It's going to be a range of some kind, okay? So we're looking for something like this, right? I assume it has to be greater than zero, right? Some kind of inequality like that, such that a collision occurs. We're having a look at motion, right? It's straight line motion, straight line motion. So there are three quantities that we keep track of in straight line motion. Three quantities and three quantities only, right? What are they? Three quantities, that change. Admittedly, I've got two objects, but you just think about each one on its own, right? You should know about displacement, right? What else can you tell me about? Velocity and acceleration, generally all in respect to time, right? Now, here's my question to you. I'm interested in a collision, right? Which of these three objects will tell me about a collision? It'll be about displacement, right? I don't care if they're traveling at the same speed. I don't care if the same force is acting on them. I want to know where they are at the same place, right? So therefore, I need to get some equations for x for each of these two Things. I have mentioned to some of you that um, you don't necessarily need to do it in terms of two equations, you can do it in terms of one. So I would normally just carry on, but my voice just can't take it today, so that's why I waited. I'm going to show you how to do it with two equations.
Okay. Um, like I said, you don't have to. You can think about one equation, namely the distance between the two objects, and then solve it for that. You want it to be zero, okay? But it's just as easy, I think, to think of it in terms of two equations, just so long as you keep them separate. So you've got six equations, you don't mix them up, okay? So if I want to get to displacement equations, right? I'm going to get two. I'm going to get one for, I've got a ball up here, right? B for ball and S for stone, okay? So therefore, I've got the displacement of the ball, right? And I've got the displacement of the stone, and I want to know when they are equal to each other. Okay, that's what I'm after. But in order to get there, well, I mean, I don't have a displacement equation. Okay, all I've got is this, right? Um, I know an initial velocity for this. I also know, even though it didn't get told to you, I know an initial velocity for the ball. What is it? It's zero. It's zero. The word that tells you that is the word dropped, right? So as opposed to, you know, thrown, so I actually put some speed into it. Um, if I drop it at time zero, well, at that time, it's not gonna be anywhere, right? So I've got an initial condition for velocity for both of them. And then I have this guy, a force, right? An acceleration that's constantly acting on the situation. So I'm gonna need to start from there and climb up the ladder. That makes sense? All right. Let's do this. First, let's consider the ball. Okay. Now, by the way, it's crucial. I've been saying this to a few of you, partly because it's on my mind because I'm marking some of your papers, right? It is crucial, 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 particularly in a topic like this, right? Um, that you set out things clearly. You have so many equations and so many values flying around, okay? You cannot hope to just sort of chuck them all out there and hope that the pile will make sense on its own, okay? So layout is part of mathematical communication. Right? Don't think it below you because you're the top class. You need to still make sure that everything you say is clearly laid out. Okay? So the ball. It's acceleration. Now, um, I haven't said anything about where things are in terms of like a... I have no coordinate system yet, so I need to put one in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the valley floor. I'm going to call that zero. You don't have to. You could call the lookout zero if you wanted and everything would be negative. Um, I just don't like negative. So that's why I called this zero which makes that positive 180, okay? That'll come in in a second. Now therefore, if that's what I've called A, sorry, that's, that's what I've called um, the, the origin and that's what I've got up there, right? Therefore, A is going to be negative, right? Because it's going downwards, okay? Um, like I said, if you flipped everything, A would be positive, okay? It's gonna be negative 10. They've supplied a value for G for us, right? Now it's important that you get that A, that's dV on dt. Right? That's a function of time. Um, you know it's a function of time because the units for your acceleration are time units, meters per second, right? So don't mix this up with what we were looking at before and um, functions of um, displacement. Okay? So if I want to go from here, climb up the ladder to velocity, right? I should integrate with respect to time, right? That'll give me V. Yeah, you integrate dV on dt with respect to t. So you get this. Right? We're going to have a lot of constants flying around. So name them accordingly. Okay. Now, this is the ball, right? I suppose if you want to make this really clear, maybe you don't like having headings like this, you can call this A, B, and B, B, right? To indicate what you're talking about. Now, how do I work out what this constant is? We have an initial condition, don't we? Okay, namely, at time zero, right? At time zero, this velocity is zero, right? Um, another thing on layout, I've seen quite a few of you, I suppose because it's common, maybe I do it sometimes as well, uh, put stuff like this, initial conditions, put it up over here, because like this is kind of peripheral to my argument, and I see what you mean, um, but try to avoid doing that. I want to be able to read down this thing, especially when I'm going to have something else running parallel to it, okay? That's that, so therefore, I can say this, Okay, and I can get my constant out. Okay, so far so good. By the way, what does that mean? Look, as time progresses, the velocity gets faster and faster in the negative direction, doesn't it? That makes sense, because that's what you'd expect it to do. Great, okay. That's velocity, I need to go one further step and get the displacement. 
So you integrate again. And we've seen this, right? We've seen this a hundred times. I pointed out to you when I first introduced it that you'll see this over and over again because of this constant coming up over and over again. Okay. Plus another constant, right? Okay, how do I evaluate this constant? The same way I did the previous one, namely with an initial condition. This is the ball, so he starts up there. Okay, so that gives you a constant for that as well. Okay, this is good, this is progress. Now I know at any time where the ball is um, and how fast it's going. That's good. Let's think about the stone. Okay, what force is acting on the stone? The same one that was acting on the ball, right? So in fact, its acceleration function, AMS, is the same. It's still negative 10, right? But when you integrate up to get the velocity of the stone, right, you've got a new constant, the fourth one, sorry, the third one by my count. Okay, and this guy's different because we have a different initial condition and it's capital V, right? There's another reason why it's useful to subscript these so you know what you're talking about. Okay, so at time zero, right, the velocity of the stone is capital V. There you go. And that is the only time it's capital V. The second it starts going, or not even the second, the millisecond, whatever is the smallest unit, it's not gonna be capital V anymore because it'll slow down because of this guy. Shouldn't have said slow down, but you get the idea. So therefore, right, when I evaluate this constant times zero, you're just gonna get this. That's the third constant. Keep climbing up, let's go to displacement. Still got the same minus 5t squared there. Ah, but now this guy sneaks in, right? Plus, there we go, here's my fourth constant. So far, so good? What's the initial condition for this? He starts on the valley floor, right? Okay, so therefore, I get this equation. Cool. So now I know at any given time t where the stone is and where the ball is. And now I just want them to collide, right? Okay, now this is interesting. Watch what happens. You want these two to collide, yes? So you say xv equals xs, no problem, right? So then you get this. Here's x b and here is x s right all I've done is just write down the equations right by the way for what it's worth this is where your two equations become my equation this is my one equation that will solve this right uh, you've got a negative 5t squared on both sides so you say okay fine 180 equals vt hmm. what does this mean I'm not going to feed you this answer yet because at this point, this is where we get confused and we think, wait, what am I after again? Now, clearly, clearly, you actually, in this equation, you want t because capital V is just a number. It's a constant. It's not, I don't know what it is, but it's just a number, right? So therefore, you get this. Now, hold on a second. Hold on. I wanted to know some restriction on V that would tell me, will they collide or not, right? But this is not at all a restriction on V. What, what is this? What does this time represent? This time, this is when these positions are the same, the displacements are the same. Of course it's when, because these equations are in terms of time. So this will tell you when the two objects hit each other. That's, that's nice, that's good information. But it's not the answer, right? How do I get an answer like this out of this? Hmm. I'm going to let you have a think about it. I've held your hand through a lot of this, right? We're at a new juncture, just like we were when I wrote this down, where now you've got to think, now what is my next step? If I told you what the next step was right now, I would rob you of the experience of actually working it out yourself. Okay.
Okay. So I'm going to give you some time to see if you can think, well, now I've gotten to this wall, how do I climb over it? Or where do I even climb to? Mm -hmm. I know some of you are on the right track, so have a think. Give it a go. If you think you want to answer, call me over. Okay. 